It's great to have John Means here from the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, hi, John. Welcome to Sports Spectrum. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, we had your wife on many years ago, uh, and I'm wondering why we haven't had you on, but it's an opportunity as we gather here in person at a conference in Florida to be able to connect and uh, kind of tell your story a little bit. So uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's, let's start there with Christ and your Jesus story. Why don't you share a little bit about who Christ is in your life and, and kind of the, the evolution of your faith? Yeah, you know... It's been a pretty up and down journey um, throughout life, and that's honestly when you texted me to, to come on the show, I thought about it for a few days, and I was like, "Am I strong enough to you know be able to go on this show and yeah. and that sort of thing?" And you know, I think that's a lot of people's journey is that you know you have your times where you're struggling with it, and then your times that you're you're thriving. Um, yeah. But it kind of so I grew up in the church. My my grandpa was an assistant pastor at a, the local church, and. I, you know, ended up, you know, Sunday school and Awanas and, uh, um, you know, uh, vacation Bible school, all that. Did that as a kid. And I, I, I went through the motions. I, I wasn't really sure what it was. I know it was, you know, my friends were there and we'd go and have fun and, and that sort of thing. And I really didn't get into my faith journey until probably college. And even then it was kind of like a lukewarm. I did the FCA and, and, and that sort of thing. Went through the motions, went there and, um, and kind of really dived into it in the minor leagues. I, I wanted to know, I'm a very black and white person. I'm very like, <laughs> I need, I need to, you know, feel it, smell it, taste it, you know, yeah. uh, kind of person. And so I wanted to, I, I went out searching for the answer. Like what, what is the answer? What is, uh, you know, the afterlife? Like what is, you know, looking up the big bang theory and, and honestly, all of that research and all that, you know, diving in just brought me closer and it brought me like, you know, I was looking up like you know, Big Bang, particles colliding. Where did that even, like, Yeah. how is that crazy, how is that not as crazy as, um, as Jesus in, in coming? And, and, um, and I, so I dove into that and all that did was make it stronger. And hmm. so I'd go back into my faith and, and that sort of thing. And then um, got really into it when I met Caroline um, yeah. for the first time. And I knew she was, came from, you know, she was a pastor's kid and, and I, I was just so interested in it um, and, and, and diving deeper into it. I'd, I wasn't surrounded by people that were really into it. So um, I was always just a genuine, you know, genuinely curious person about it. And, and we had gone, you know, Bible studies and that sort of thing. And, you know, I'd, it's kind of gone up and down and up and down, but it keeps getting stronger on, on those, those ups. And that's good. Once I got to the minor league or to the, to the major leagues, um, you know, I, I had everything. I thought I had everything I wanted. You know, I thought I had, um, you know, I, 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 my, my rookie season was so weird. It was just, you know, I, I did really, really well and really, really well. I went, made to the all-star game and I was like, nothing can stop me. <laughs> and, uh, all of a sudden my dad gets diagnosed with, yeah. with stage four cancer. So yeah, that kind of shocked my whole world. And I, you know, it, it it was an awful thing. It was probably the lowest part of my life, but at the same time, I was never stronger in in my faith, and and mm. that honestly brought me so close to to God, and and you know made me so close to people that were in their faith, and um and you know chapel became so important, and uh, community came so important, and it just seemed to uh, you know how awful it was, and we were so close, and it, yeah, it's hard to describe, but yeah, at the same time that was kind of where I, I kind of, you know, had hit the fork in the road and I chose the right direction and, and I wanted to pursue it. And, um, so yeah, just, uh, kind of ups and downs, <laughs> but at the same time, um, you know, I, I, I'm, all of it has kind of got me to the point now. But the road keeps coming back to that, mm -hmm. to Jesus. And that's Every what I time. love about it. It doesn't, pull you away from it. It keeps coming back. And so can you just describe that? Because a lot of times when people go through tragedy, I'm even in this room, uh, you know, and our colleagues, Leah and John, they've all gone through, through loss and hardship. I've gone through loss and hardship. You've gone through loss and hardship. It's just, it feels like it's just part of life. It's not what we want to happen, but it happens. And yet we find ourselves still coming back to Christ. Can you walk us through a little bit about what that was like for you? Because a lot of people will, will turn away. Yeah. And when, when tragedy or hardship happens, they run far, far away from God. Um, can you just share a little bit more on that? Yeah, no. I, and you know, that my, after my dad passed in 2020, it was, you know, I, 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 
I was upset. I was angry. I was I was mad. I was like, why? Why him? Why? Why does that make any sense? He was a healthy, you know, fifty yeah. year old, and um, but at the same time, I, I knew. I knew where he was going. I, I I knew that there was there was something to pursue here. I I felt the presence of it, and um, but it was you know like I said, it it has its ups and downs, and um, and honestly, so that happened, and and twenty one was you know good season, got hurt, and then in twenty two I I blew out opening day, had Tommy John surgery, so yeah, and that was just another like low for me and. Um, and that, it, it, so I, that happened and then, um, kind of was home for a long time. I was, uh, um, I was, you know, with Caroline and my, my son, who's almost three now and spent a lot of time at home and it was weird. It was like, okay, this is, we're in season right now, but I'm home and, and rehabbing here. And, um, and meanwhile, the Orioles were doing really well and I kept going back because chapel for the Orioles had gotten so big mm. and. Yeah. Uh, that has completely changed my whole perspective and, and got me to as high as I've ever been because um, because when I was a rookie, 19, 20, 21, there was probably two or three guys to come into chapel. And, wow. Um, and in, in 22, it, it started where we had 10, then 12, then 15, and, and all of a sudden it was growing, and I felt that, and I didn't realize how much I needed that during the season. And now I was rehabbing at home and not there with the team. And so I, I had to go back once a week or, or once a month for a week um, just to feel that environment. And hmm. I needed that, and, and that really kind of helped me with you know my dad and, and process certain things. And uh, and you know not even though I wasn't on the team, I just felt that presence when I was there, and and that kind of brought me back there you never want to say that it's only because 20 guys went to chapel that your team is having a great yeah, season. god isn't getting us wins Correct. yes oh, yeah god's he's not the wins no but it's still really neat i mean we talked to many players and coaches who are part of cultures that you could just see the lord working inside those those locker rooms inside those clubhouses uh describe this year you you came back you made it back from tommy john lee in the year um in september to be around this Orioles team that made the postseason for the first time in a long time and won the AL East. What was it like experiencing success on the field? But it sounds like some pretty cool successes off the field uh, with people's yeah. faith on that team. We, I mean, we had great veteran leadership with you know Kyle Gibson who's here and, yeah. and Danny Coulomb who are, you know just on fire for the Lord and it. It really made a difference in the clubhouse, I think. And I was, like I said, I'm not. I wasn't even there for most of the year. I was there. I'd come up every once in a while. You could just feel the difference. Yeah. And I don't. I can't speak for the other guys, but for me, it was just like, wow, this is. This seemed like the difference between this, you know, 2023 and 2021 when we went on a 19 game losing streak. Like this is. Mm. Um, the the guys just feel comfortable in who they are, and I think that's kind of what Jesus brings out in us. We we feel comfortable in our you know our body and our feet and our, you know that that sort of thing. And, um, and there's no judgment. No one's you know no one's judging you. But you know things. I mean, when, when you first come up as a rookie, at least when I first came up as a rookie, guys tried to like keep you in your place. Like you, this is how it is. You but you have to fall into this mold. You have to become mm -hmm. this person. And that's not really from Jesus, you know. It's, it's be who you are, and I, if you believe, and if you are, you know, a believer in Jesus, um, you're gonna act right. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, follow certain, certain, certain guidelines. And you don't need the, you know, angry veteran to tell you this is how it's supposed to be. It's, you know, <laughs> you just need to be in the Word and 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 just trust that. Trust yeah. that. Well, you're kind of one of those veterans now, too. You've yeah. been with the team for a while. Um, but seeing these young guys, I mean, there's so many great young players in the Orioles uh, on, the, on the major league system and the minor league system and the farm system coming up with guys like Jackson Holiday. But they're all, I don't want to say all, but most of them are pretty solid believers, which is really encouraging to me from the outside looking in. I have to imagine it's encouraging for you to see so many young guys who you see the platforms growing pretty quickly and yet they still have this firm foundation in, in Jesus. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was the, you know, that's part of the draft process or what, but it it seems like everybody who comes up, you know, 
is is such a good person and such yeah. so kind and they just also happen to be, be believers and they they and it you know i think that correlates and it is they come up they're comfortable who they are they're they're willing to share their testimony with other guys and i i've witnessed it multiple times with guys coming up and 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 then, like I said, it just breeds comfort. Like you feel comfortable in your skin, and that's so important in this game too. And it it, it changes it changes careers. It changes lives. I mean, and obviously you, our career doesn't define us. But at the same time, I mean, like I think we were talking about today, it was, you know, it it helps breed success if you're comfortable in your own skin. If you're comfortable, you know, who you are, it, it makes it so much easier to perform on the field. And and these young guys, on they're so good, and they're so their mindset and their mentality is is uh, second to none. So yeah, it's being with the Orioles and, and seeing kind of where where they're at now and what they're going to look like in a few years, just from the mentality side. Let's not even talk about baseball side. is really cool to see. It's exciting to watch and see what will happen in the next few years. And like you said, not even mattering, you know, if they win games. Obviously, the fans might be like, "Man, we'd like to win a hundred games again," but. If you see some lives being changed, I remember I was telling uh, another baseball player who was on this podcast, I remember uh, someone telling me their favorite season in the big leagues was their worst season statistically because they saw God move in the locker room. They saw people getting baptized and discipled and coming to Christ and chapel was at an all-time high. And they said, "How? who am I to say that because I had a bad season that God didn't do amazing things within this clubhouse. And that was my favorite season. And I thought, wow, that's really, that's playing freely. That's a crazy that's, concept. It, um, right? But that, mm -hmm. that makes sense, I would does. imagine, now as a follower of Christ yourself. It does. And it does. And I didn't realize that when I was up there. I, you know, the Orioles, we were rebuilding for so long. And you just, you, it almost breeds selfishness when that label is kind of slapped on you. Um, and then, you know, obviously... That, I thought it was because of the rebuild. I thought it was because of that label. But in reality, I think it was that we had one guy in chapel. We had two guys in chapel. And I, I wouldn't even go sometimes because, you know, we're, no one's there. And, yeah. you know, I, it just it wasn't a priority. And now it seems like we're having chapel. And we have Bible study during the week. And it's, it's like, okay, I'm going to this. Every, you know, we're going to make sure guys are coming here to kind of, to you know, express themselves or talk about certain things and that are hard, and um, it, it it was really cool. And like I said, I wasn't even up there for the whole year, but even I felt it. And I was I pitched four games, you yeah, know, and yeah. so I could only imagine those guys that were there all season. And um, yeah, it, it it makes such a difference for just quality of life because it, this game is so hard. There's so much failure, yes. and yet, like you said, some guys' best you know favorite seasons are the worst seasons, and. I think that is such a cool thing to um, to just value that value, you know, quality of life over over season because you'll just you'll run yourself into the ground if you are only worried about statistics and wins. And it's got to be so hard too because as a pitcher, you might make the best pitch you could have ever made, and the guy hits it 450 feet, and you're like, okay. This game, it's, it could eat you alive if that's if this is where you put your identity in. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had that moment where you're like, "Dang, that was a good pitch," like that was a this or a that in that moment, and then boom, it just goes the other way. And maybe, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about your no hitter in a, in a bit, but like maybe in, in the day of your no hitter, you may have made some bad pitches, but mm -hmm. got away with it, and the guy might have swung and missed, or he might have popped it up or whatever when you knew you made a mistake. But that's baseball, and that's I don't know. I just I, I hear you talk about the highs and lows, like that's got to be so interesting from a professional baseball player standpoint to know that you can only can control what you can control. Yeah. And it, it, when, you know, I, you feel the difference when you're out on the field too. You know, I, 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 I tell guys sometimes when I, I know I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm doing okay during the game when I give up like a just smash double or something and my heart rate doesn't raise or I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm, I'm mm. good. I'm comfortable when I'm like, when I, when I give it up and I'm just like, Oh, Oh, that's off the wall. Let me, oh, what am I doing? And start freaking out. And you know, the heart rate starts to rise. Like, you, like calming that heart rate is so important and having something to value other than yourself and the game and statistics is it's so valuable and in, into performance and um then also just you know um just making sure you're doing well mentally tell me about returning this past year in september in in essence a pennant race i mean you guys knew you were going to be in the playoffs but you didn't know if you would win the division or not 
And we were at one of those games, my buddies and I, uh, my pastor and my good friend Jason Jacobs, a huge Orioles fan, um, who got to meet you a couple mm-hmm. years back. And he uh, wanted to go down to a game. I think it was in September. And uh, we went down and, uh, and they lost. Uh, but then they ended up winning the next three. And it really solidified the division um, for Baltimore. But that place was rocking. And I kind of imagine that's very interesting from your perspective to not have pitched at all and suddenly you're back you're not just back you're thrusted into a a pennant race Mm -hmm. with this team that you've been around a little bit with but not completely and yet you're seeing Camden Yards you know packed to the masses and these fans are just rabid it was had to be such a unique experience having been away for over a year yeah no and you know when I had pitched before we we weren't back in the place that we were pretty we were struggling pretty hard yeah Uh, last year I pitched and so um, just to see that difference and to see all those fans out and, you know, going from like the rehab starts and I was, I was kind of struggling to re- rehab starts and there was so much doubt going in. I'm like, well, well what's going to happen? What's, what's, uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And honestly, what really changed me and me and Tyler Wells actually, who's also here, we're down in the minor leagues together and we were both in AAA and, and, you know, we're both. It's, it's not a great place to be, you know, mentally. Sure. And what something we were both doing were our daily devotionals. We were doing it every day and, and doing that and um, working on that and our stoicism app and, and all this um, mental work. And it, it really, it really did help me. And that was kind of where I made that big jump of, you know what, whatever happens, happens. And I don't care about the crowd. I don't care about, you know, the, the results. Like I'm, I'm just going to go out there and try to be the best version of myself and, um, but it was so cool to see, you know, be, at least be present in the moment. Cause I could, you know, I, I was a little worried that I was going to be a little freaked out and, yeah. um, it's been a while. It's been a couple of years. And, and t- nobody would have thought differently, John, let's yeah. be honest here. I mean, you're pitching in the minor leagues and, you know, maybe if you sold out, you get 7,000 people, 5,000 people, yeah. and then you go to Camden and you got 43,000 yeah, screaming back fans. Yeah, in the house for yeah, a pennant race. Exactly. It was, but it was incredible it was absolutely incredible and to see that place because it's such a great baseball town and it is. you know we yeah. were struggling when i was up in the big leagues before we were struggling and so um just to see it thriving and to see it you know the the build up of you know what was to come and what's to come and uh it was so cool to see because you know that that city can be so fun at camden yard yeah that's all right my, my favorite ballparks to go visit that's for sure uh, i want to go back a little bit um you had such an interesting 2019, your rookie year, 12 wins, a 3-6 ERA, but an all-star berth. And that comes quickly. Like, holy cow, This, like you said, this is what it's like. Oh, I got this whole thing figured out. Mm-hmm. But it's still an all-star game appearance. Were you able to appreciate and and, and have fun and, and soak in a little bit of what that was like? Or was it just kind of a whirlwind <laughs> going to that all-star game? Uh I don't think I was very present for it, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of a whirlwind. Um, yeah, I, you know, and I think we just talked about uh, before we went on was 18. I pitched the last seven games of the year mm-hmm. in, in 2018. I was actually at home when I got the call. Uh, I hadn't thrown in two weeks and got the call up to the big leagues, up to Fenway Park. I mean, my debut. Um, it's a pretty and, good place to make a debut. Yeah, in 18, they won the World Series, and I got absolutely obliterated. <laughs> they I gave up by like a 360 foot home run to uh, JD Martinez. Yeah, and it was just uh, no. I think I gave up like seven runs in three innings, and so that was like my previous experience. And go in the off season, make a couple changes in spring training, somehow make the team out of camp. Did not think that was going to happen. I I'm, we have opening day in New York against mm-hmm. the Yankees, and yep. um, I you know. This is, you know, this kind of started my faith, you know, my stronger faith yeah, journey. Yeah. But in, in New York, I, you know, I was in the bullpen. I was like the last guy to make the team. I was like the 25th man. And go to the bullpen, and I don't pitch till the third game. I come in, our starter's kind of struggling. I come in with the bases loaded, one out. I, I walk a guy in, um, not starting off well. Mm. And then I, I kind of I get it out somehow um, and go to the next inning. And I start throwing this this changeup. And it, all of a sudden, I'd never had like a good changeup before in my entire career. Hmm. And all of a sudden, it's like swing and miss, swing and miss, swing and miss, swing and miss. And I'm like, what is going on? What I have never had this before. I just keep throwing it, keep throwing it, keep throwing it. And all of a sudden, I'm like three innings deep. I have like 
six strikeouts and uh, I come out of the game like what just happened because hmm. I've never had this pitch I've never had a good change up I've always just been a fastball slider guy and I don't it, for some reason that now that's my best pitch and I'm not really sure why I'm not really sure where it came from and I was like what what's going on and um and it just kind of went from there and it was up 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 uh, throwing this pitch that's was unhittable at the time and you now make an all-star team because of that pitch and hmm. um and i'm like well this I, I got it all figured out like you said like like i said earlier yeah, it's like yeah. i got it all figured out and then yeah then um my dad gets diagnosed and in new york again um actually is when i found out really but, yeah wow. yeah i came in it was two weeks after the all-star game i came in um, to the dugout or to the clubhouse after the game and saw the text and saw Caroline and it was it was a pretty tough moment but it just it, I I'm not, I know God wasn't you know creating you know bad things to happen but at the same time sure. it felt like the the what he was providing me was this isn't everything like all I prayed about in the minor leagues was just one day in the big leagues I just wanted to make one day wow I was in double a for three seasons I was, you know, looking for jobs. I, what, I did not think I was going to make it. And I would just pray every night. Just give me one day. One day in the big leagues. That's all I asked for. I'm not asking for much. Hmm. And all of a sudden, he gave me all of it. Like, it, you know, I was everything and more and more and more. And I was an all-star. I'm like, this is awesome. Like, I, you know, I'm going to have, you know, 10 plus year career. What, what's going on? Like, yeah. And then that happens. It's like, hey. This isn't everything, and that yeah. that was the message I took from it. Obviously, you know, it was it was still very hard, but yeah. um, it is kind of provided that mantra for me for my career. It's like, do not let this, you know, um, fill your head. Do not let this, um, you know, send you over the edge. You know, do, stats aren't everything. This game's not everything. Yeah, it's such an interesting journey that you've had, John, because. Your dad passed in August 2020, mm -hmm. correct? So you have COVID going on, by the way, yeah. too. And that year was just a weird baseball yeah, year. Yeah, it was actually nice because during quarantine, I, we, I was home and spent all that time with him. Oh, that's a blessing. And yeah. so we, I, we were grilling every night, and we'd have family dinner at the table every night. And it was... That's nice. And that's so good, it, was, it, was, it was a blessing, and, you know, I got to be there for that. Um, I unfortunately wasn't there when he passed. We were playing. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, to have that time that we weren't supposed to get in the first place... Um, W was pretty special and you know i'll have always have those memories yeah you wouldn't have had that if it was a regular season yeah. in many ways so you can we can hate COVID all we want but it allowed you to have some really quality time with your father yeah what's really interesting about your story is it was nine months to the day of your dad passing that you pitched a no hitter in the big leagues against the mariners and there aren't many people that have done that there's only mm -hmm. a handful of guys that have ever thrown a no hitter in this game what was that experience like I imagine it was there was so many, you talk about roller coaster of emotions or roller coaster journey of faith. I have to imagine that game is a bit of a roller coaster in your mind yeah. too when you think back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause 2020, you know, I was, it was a struggle. It was a struggle for me. You know, my dad passed in August. I had like a nine ERA going into like the last four games. It was, I wasn't sure how much longer I was going to, it just did not feel good. And yeah. Um, so, but I finished 2020 decently strong and then 21 i was like okay what's gonna what's gonna happen here and uh started off kind of kind of like 2019 did and um yeah ended up throwing uh throwing no hitter it was <laughs> it was crazy it was absolutely insane and i'm just it's i'm just so blessed to be able to say that yeah. um but but yeah it was um it was it was a fun time it was a really fun time and uh, yeah, I just, you know, wish he was there, but at the same time sure, he was, was there a moment that sticks out for you in that game that you'll just never forget, whether it was the last pitch or even somewhere in the middle of the game, was there any kind of moment that just, you know, that's what you turn to when you think about that game? Um, well, when I going out for the ninth, I just, I remember my, the feeling of my legs, I kind of got the, the jelly legs and I, <laughs> I remember the exact same feeling when I made my debut in 18 at Fenway park. Wow. It was those, that same feeling of like, Oh, I'm not feeling my legs at all. Mm -hmm. Like, and that it didn't feel there and that. And then the last out was like this soft liner and I wasn't sure if we were shifting or not. And it was to the opposite field. And I was like, Oh no. And I turned around and 
Ramon Urias is right there and catches it, and it was it was so fun. And then after that, it was just a whirlwind of you know texts and interviews and all you know all that comes with it. So yeah. it was um, it it was special. But but yeah, that's probably what I remember most was just that that feeling of you know how my legs felt. The, the Hall of Fame usually calls when there's a no hitter thrown. I don't know if they ask for the ball or the hat, but what do you remember having to give them? But what do you remember being able to keep? Like, what do you have from that game? Um, I remember. So after I threw it, they they come running up the stairs with the rubber of the mound, and I didn't realize that I got the rubber. <laughs> the I didn't rubber. realize how big it was. It's pretty big. Yeah, it's got sticks yeah, in it and stuff, it, right? Yeah. It goes and into so the they're like, "Oh, hey, what are you going to do with this?" I'm like, "I don't, I don't know. That's <laughs> awesome, though." That and the dirt um, yep. was pretty cool. Um, it was pretty, yeah, that was, that's probably the most memorable thing. That's the cool. rubber of it. The rubber of all things, yeah. right? And you had to sign that rubber, I would hope. Or... Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's in my office back home right now, but, okay. um, still haven't found a place for it. It's just say, sitting it's... on the floor. I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. It's a weird thing to, to display it. in a man cave or, yeah. you know, a, a trophy room or something is the rubber <laughs> uh, from a baseball game. I yeah, guess. You could re, you could re, you know imagine like put a bunch of dirt down and put the rubber down on yeah. it and kind of you know create some sort Angle of science or, experience yeah. or something <laughs> uh, yeah i have no idea right now it's just on the floor and it just looks like it's a piece of trash kind of that's cool yeah as long as your son doesn't get to it right and stuff <laughs> with it. exactly um so last year you you go through an intense rehab you have the tommy john surgery in 22 correct mm -hmm. and so you know you're going to be out for a while what did god teach you in that year uh, of being patient and just learning, okay, this is going to be a process here, and I know I'm not going to be back, and ultimately it wasn't until September of 23, so more than a year. What did God show you in that process of trying to have to wait it out and, and go through what you had to go through to get back on the on the diamond? Yeah, um, 22 was, uh, you know, so obviously we struggled 19, 20, and 21, and 22 we were good, and, and I wasn't there for it. Yeah. And, it was a very humbling experience that, you know, I, you know, I, I was there for the bad. And then when I leave, it's the good. And I actually, so I haven't been on a winning team since I was 14 years old. Wow. Oh yeah. My college. Not, not Fort Scott Community not College Fort or Scott, West, West Virginia? Virginia. Nope. No? Not, not quite. We were, we were pretty, you know, pretty below average at okay. all those places and hadn't made a playoff game in a summer league or wow. fall or, you know, anything since I was literally high school, nothing. And so I was really looking forward to that first winning season and I get hurt right before they have their first winning season. And, Ugh. and so it was, it was humbling, you know, I, there were, I, I really struggled with, with it. And I, you know, I really struggled with accepting that, you know, I'm not there for it. And I think that's probably why I went back so much. And, um, and God, you know, I, I felt that he was telling me to, to keep on yeah. the process of, of being in him. Um, and that's when I started my devotional every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's something I'd really struggled with and, yeah. and, and, you know, before then and, and just starting your day off with the devotional changes the entire aspect of the day and completely. Yeah. And, I, I felt that I really did, and, and going into that twenty three season, I was doing it every day. I stayed on it. It doesn't mean it was all easy, but at least sure. I, I felt good to start. And um, but yeah, I, I think he was just trying to teach me patience because <laughs> I, it's not it's not always going to go how I want it to go. And I actually so I was rehabbing Tommy John, and then in July. I was supposed to st go, I think, no, I think it was June, I was supposed to go up and start my rehab assignment, and I um, strained my Terrace Major the Ugh. very last day. I had the flight that night. I was pitching that day, and I was doing a med ball slam and strained that and put me six to eight weeks behind Ugh. schedule. And I, I remember feeling it, and it like felt like a Velcro up in my you know armpit. Mm. And I was like, there's my season. It's over. Like, I'm never, you know, am I going to play again? Am I going to, you know, I haven't pitched in two years. Are they really going to sign me for a third? And um, and just all these negative thoughts came in. And so that happened. I, I remember calling Caroline upset, of you know, saying, look, I, it's going to be another six to eight weeks. Because we were all trying to figure out travel and everything with this with my with my son. And, yeah. um, and it was, you know... 
it was such a test. It was such a test, and I feel so much better because of it. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful for it, honestly. And um, I, I'm stronger in my faith now. I'm, you know, I feel like I'm a better husband, a better brother because of of what I've kind of gone through with that. And um, and I get really carried away with with you know in season about really focusing on like I'm um, being present in season. I kind of blow off other people and, and try to focus on, I need to focus. This is my job and I'm going to try to be the best I can at it. And, yeah. um, this kind of taught me like, no, the, like cherish those relationships, like be in those relationships. Don't worry about this. Hmm. Wow. That's a lot. Well, yeah. it's going to be interesting to watch 2024 and we're not going to try to predict anything ever, uh, because baseballs will, will bite you if you try to do that. But I'm excited for you, man. I hope that's, a, I hope, you know, it's, it's almost like a preparation stage and talking to so many guys who've been through some highs and lows that, you know, God prepares you so that when things don't do come, you know, he's there with you, but also prepares you so that, you know, you go through the trial so that when the, the good things happen, you, mm -hmm. you can appreciate them even more. Yeah, I'm hoping that, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm going to do my best to stay on track, but at the same time, I'm just for that quality of life and, and community and relationship that you want to build and during this season is is so important, and that's what I'm going to try and focus on. Well, it's going to be fun to watch what God does in 2024, John Means. Thanks for being here, buddy. Great yeah. talking to you, and uh, look forward to staying in touch and hopefully having you back on again. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>